and on this um, cloudy, rainy, and uh, in many ways a sad, sad morning. And uh, I just, uh, um, I, f I woke up this morning and I just felt led of the Lord to um, to do a Facebook Live because in this, uh, you know, quarantine season with current events, um, uh, on a Sunday we would take part of our service, typically what we do, take part of our service and um, pray for um, current events and um, crisis going on, but but we can't. So I woke up this morning and just felt like to, to go have a, a Facebook Live to address certain things, but then finish really with prayer. And um, I have spent time praying about this as I'm not just winging this because um, me giving my opinions or thoughts mean Jack. Um, and I'm like, Lord, what, what do you want me to share? Because um, I only want to say what you want me to say. So because um, right now I'm Yesterday I was, um, I was, Friday I was gone all day, um, out of town and came back and, uh, watched la on Friday night and I was just heartbreaking seeing all what's going on. And then yesterday I was spending most of the day, um, away from all media cause I was, um, getting prepared to help a single mom, um, with a vehicle and, but last night I got on and I tell you right now, I felt like last night I feel today, I feel sad for what's going on in our country. Um, I'm angry. Um, there is a righteous anger and I'm angry with um, what's happening in our country and those who are um, making a situation worse. And I'm also, my heart is breaking. And um, I think what's going on too is um, breaking the heart of God. And, um, so what I want to do today is, um, <clears throat> I want to give some, hopefully some perspective that I felt God put on my heart. Um, it's a dangerous thing to do in our culture today because I saw some, um, uh, pastors and I saw some, um, godly people posting things that <clears throat> were not inflammatory, but it still triggered in, in uh, inflammation and, and, and harsh reactions. So, um, I have no control how people will receive what I feel God's put on my heart today. Um, because I was listening is listening to someone I respect, a, a, a black former athlete who's a pastor now, and and he said, we need, we, we need to search for truth. And what, what jumped in my mind was when Jesus was facing a, a, a out of control, angry crowd of Pharisees who had hatred in their heart, um, and he faced Pilate and Pilate asked him, you know, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus responded, what you said is true. And then Pilate said, what is truth? And I feel like that is uh, America, one of America's statements today. We don't know what truth is. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we're, one of the reasons why we're, we're so out of control as a country is because we've walked away from, uh, from Jesus and who is, who is truth. And so I have five truths that I hope that will give perspective um, and um, then I want you to join me in prayer. Uh, the first <clears throat> truth is that Jesus is our only hope in life. That's why I'm, I'm wearing this uh, Ben's Jesus shirt that I, uh, <clears throat> I bought after watching the, the series on YouTube called The Chosen about Jesus and choosing his disciples and uh, love that uh, season one. <clears throat> But I think we need Jesus more than ever right now in our country. And as um, as angry as many people are at Jesus and the church of Jesus, um, our only hope is Jesus. And Jesus is the only true unifier of diversity. I love that God has brought more diversity of color under our church at Grace Point more than probably ever. And and uh, we may not have everything in common. We may have very little in common when it comes to um, the color that God chose to give us. But Jesus can, um, can unify more than anything. And so Jesus is our only hope. And I'm going to share that's the first truth. Um, that, that 
<clears throat> that I uh, want to share. The second truth is um, sin is the root cause to all the all of this pain, the anger, the strife, um, the conflict. Sin is the root, and the root of racism is sin. And um, I believe it is true that that racism is colorblind. I have seen it from all sorts of different different uh, ethnicities and, and but the root of racism of anger toward another race or arrogance about your own um that is that is sin and one of the, and Jesus died <clears throat> died for for all sin and and I love when Jesus went down uh, going to Jerusalem he he didn't take the the normal route to go from a Sea of Galilee to, to Jerusalem. He went right through Samaria. And it, that that just probably confused his disciples who were Jewish to the core and they hated, as a, as a culture, they hated the Samaritans. They called them dogs and they looked down on them and they spat upon them and they would avoid them. And Jesus went right through um, Samaria to meet a woman at the well. And so, I don't, it's in the, racism is in every country. Racism has the potential to be in every single human heart, but the root of that is sin. And um, the the third truth that I wanted to share is the frustration, the exasperation, the exhaustion and anger for many people of color is real. Let me say that again, the, the frustration, the exasperation, the exhaustion and anger for many of our um, colored brothers and sisters is real. And I guess maybe because I'm in a parenting series now, um, God led me to Ephesians chapter six when he's talking about the home. And he says, uh, the word of God says this in verse four, it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. It's like, how will you treat your kids? If you if you treat them wrong, um, you will exasperate them. And the King James Version says you will provoke them unto wrath. And um, provoking unto wrath or being exasperated to the point of anger that does not condone actions done in wrath, done in exasperation. Um, and, and so I'm trying to give us some perspectives of why our brothers and sisters of color are so frustrated. Um, I'm not justifying, nor does God, um, wrongful actions as a result of wrath and anger. The Bible says, you know, you be angry and sin not. But I think some perspective um, needs to, to be given. Um, again, not in condoning, but I mean, in that passage from Scripture, it says, if we parent poorly, that can produce horrible uh, reactions. And I think that's what's playing out. But I'll just back up a little bit in the history. And I mean, we could go hundreds of years ago, but just back, I mean, the decade that I was born in the 60s was the was the decade of, of chaos and, and riots and marches, but the root of most of those riots and marches were, were was just pure frustration of like, I'm tired of being treated this way. I'm tired of, tired of being um, um, viewed a certain way. I'm tired of and exhausted of being viewed as less. And, uh, you know, all sorts of craziness took place in the 60s. And and I, we only have perspective in our life lifetime, but I feels like what's going on, what has happened really in our country in the last 10 years. But please keep politics out of this for just a little bit. For the past 10 years, it feels like um, we're back in the 60s, but... Um, I, I remember I would live through the 90s in 1992, the whole Rodney King ordeal. 
and um, and how he was treated by the by the police and it, what it what did it trigger triggered triggered the the riots and um, and and all that in in L.A. And then a few years ago, here's Eric Gardner uh, in New York City, uh, a large large black man selling cigarettes, you know, and uh, the chokehold that the, you know that he experienced that led to his death. And then recently, um, Ahmad Arbery, he's just jogging, and a father and son, you know, chased him down in a truck and 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 shot him. And then and then just recently, George uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis, and the whole just watching the video just it just brings up all sorts of emotions if you're if you're a human being watching it again i'm not condoning anything that's wrong but can we just be honest and say that that there is real frustration and ex exasperation and exhaustion going on the truth is that we we don't have justice for all right now and it, I'm not talking about just color. It's it's all over. It's there's a cry in our country. Can we have justice? Could 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 those who are doing wrong uh, pay the penalty of doing wrong? And where we're seeing it all over. And again, I go back to when we walk away as a culture from Jesus, um, we're reaping what we have um, sown. But Jesus is our only hope. Sin is the root cause. Frustration, exasperation, exhaustion, and anger are real for many of our colored brothers and sisters. But number four, the truth, is that revival is needed now. Revival is needed now. And you know where revival starts? Is when you and I as individuals look in the mirror and we see our own ugliness and we deal with that first. Um, revival has never started by pointing to someone else and say, get your act together. Revival, turning from our attitudes of sin and our actions of sin and going toward Christ. That's where revival starts, but it begins by looking in the mirror. And that's the a fifth truth is this, is prayer has always been the fuse that lights revival. Revival will not take place by a piece of legislation that's passed. Revival will start when people of God start praying, um, humbling themselves, re repenting themselves, and then um, praying and crying out to God for help. Uh, one of the things that Pastor Kevin has been working on is uh, a prayer walk on our uh, Grace Point a campus and having stations and different targets. So, um, and I just want to encourage Kevin to keep moving forward with this and, and add a station for pray for revival, um, um, pray for maybe for restoration, uh, between, um, the, our races and revival in our hearts and in, in our land, um, prayer, um, does more for us than it does for God. I think God knows what it does for us. That's why he commands us to pray and pray often. In fact, pray all the time. And there's more that I can say, but then it would just be my opinions and um, who gives a rip about my opinions. But um, these truths in this time of uh, pers hopefully pr perspective and uh, a time of prayer is what God led me to do. I can't do this live because our services are already uh, recorded and ready to go. But would you join me in prayer, and then I'll finish after I pray. Uh, dear God, we need you. Um, we are a broken culture because we have broken away from you. We have rejected you. We have re rejected your, uh, your word. Um, and sin is running rampant in our own hearts, in, the, in, the, in every aspect, in every corner of our country. And God, I just cry out behalf of those who have the same passion that I do, we, we ask for help. Um, it feels like the, the the Jews in slavery crying out for help for the bondage they are in, and our country is in bondage, bondage to our sin, bondage to our hate, bondage to um, our tribalism, bondage to division. 
And God, I just cry out. Just one voice. I just ask for revival to take place. I pray that revival would start in my home and then in Kitsap County and then in at Grace Point. And then the revival would spread across our country. I pray that, that you would um, shout in the minds of believers who post without praying. That only makes the situations worse. I pray that they will not post their opinions without praying and asking you permission. Now, God, it breaks my heart and makes me angry to see the things that I'm seeing from quote unquote people of followers of Jesus. I pray for that you would start revival in the house of God and repentance. God, I also pray for um, uh, my friends of a different color, but we have unity in Christ and their exhaustion and frustration. God, I pray that you would comfort them. pray that you would give them wisdom of what to teach their kids and how to be wise, but how to be Christ-like. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would use this chaos and anger to uh, to really force um, arrogant politicians to seek you. Uh, they don't have jack of wisdom in, in and of themselves. I pray that uh, proud leaders would be humbled and would seek your face. And God, I pray that as a result, it would, would lead to a larger revival in our country. So God, without you, we can do nothing. And Lord, without you, none of us can change anything. So we lean into you. Christ, we lean into how you were treated and, and what the crowds did to you and how unjust uh, you um, were persecuted. But you went willingly. You knew what was going to happen. You did it anyways. So thank you, Jesus, for who you are. And Lord, thank you for the example you gave us when with face with all sorts of accusations, you were just silent. It takes more strength to be silent than to spout off and say what we feel. And so, Lord, I pray that you would somehow use this with our church. Um, Lord, I pray that people would have heard my heart and that I spent time in prayer and in your word before I opened my mouth. And Lord, may you use this for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I had no idea when we recorded um, today's message um, what was going to happen in our, our country. And I don't deal with racism directly, but I think the, the core theme um, of what I'm going to talk about at, uh, at when we go live at 1015 um, on, our, on Facebook Live with Grace Point Kids app and on our YouTube channel, that um, the core is we can't change the chaos and all the craziness in our culture, but we can change our own home. We can start there. So I think that principle applies to this whole uh, really core issue that we're dealing with. So thank you for watching. I hope it gave perspective and, and I pray that you join me in prayer. God bless. We need them. Bye.